Did you start comedy in college? Mm-mm. You started after. I remember I used to go wa- like support friends that were doing open mics and being. I would, like, I would do the exact. Really, same thing. and yeah. I remember being like, I could do this, but I would never do this. I don't want to. Isn't that weird that I had no urge in college? Yeah, and then what, like what 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 was like the the final click? So it's after college. You after college, I came here. I was staying with my cousin Macala, who um, she was working for. I believe it was. CAA or ICM or oh, someone dang. like someone like that, and um, and she would hang out at the comedy store and watch comedians. And I remember that day something happened in the news: uh, a, a manhole, a, the Earth ate a man in his living room. He was in a recliner, and it just gave in and ate him. And I had made a joke to her, and we both laughed for like ten minutes about I don't even remember what it was that I said. And then that night we came, and Dane Cook popped into the OR, and this is when Dane Cook was like hot still. Like yeah, yeah. he's still the I I love Dane Cook. I think he's a really nice guy. But this was like in Dane Cook prime and he popped in and he did a joke that was so similar to the thing that I had just said earlier that day and and I remember he got like this huge clap and an applause break and then I remember thinking like this guy sells out Madison Square Garden and like we have similar thoughts Oh, and well, something so, yeah. just clicked where I was like, I thought of the same thing this guy thought of, and I know we both wrote it today because it just happened. And so it was just like, I don't know. That day, I dropped out of school the next day after seeing that. No, really? Yeah. Just like that? Yeah, I did Kill Tony that night. <laughs> it just so happened after I watched his set, uh, Tony was having killed Tony and I saw him in the hallway and I had hung out with him for like a week and a half. I wasn't even, and he was, and I was like, oh, oh, and I, oh, and my cousin signed me up for uh, an open mic. So I did the open mic that day and I was already, and then I saw him and I was like, hell yeah, dude, I'm going to do this. And then Tony, that same day, Tony asked me to go up and go in the belly room. So the first time I ever did stand up, I went up in the OR and the belly room, same night. Oh, that's sick. Really crazy. And um, and I did a set and I just kept doing stand-up from then. I dropped out of school the next day. Bobby Lee convinced me. I was like telling him that I did a set. I had a lot of fun and I kind of want to do comedy. And I, But I have to go back to school in two weeks and I have to like decide now if I'm going to cancel. And he was like, drop out. So Bobby Lee was part of the reason I dropped out of school. And yeah, I dropped out. I kept doing Kill Tony. And then I met, um, from that show, I met Ralphie May. He brought me, Bobby Lee and Ralphie May were two of the first comedians to bring me on the road. So I went on the road with them. And then I met Joe Rogan. And like ever since then, it's been fucking Joey Diaz, Joe Rogan, Ralphie May, like all those guys. It was a good crew to be friends with at first. Yeah, So I got very, very lucky. Like seriously, I got very lucky. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. That, I know th- those are the best stories though, because like it feels like I I love when it feels organic like that. Other than being like I planned it all. And, yeah, like, yeah, and I'm just like, should I do this? And just little things. Bobby saying drop out. Like Tony walking by in the hallway, being like, I was just looking for someone that wants to go up on this show I'm starting, and it was Kill Tony. But now it's he's on the cover of Variety magazine and shit. Like it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, so big. So crazy, but yeah, it was fun. And it was really a lot of, it was a lot of luck, but I did put myself in those places. Like oh, yeah, I did. For sure. uh, you kind of have to make your own luck a little bit. You have to, put, you have to tug it along. I, I, I believe that. Like, uh, like, uh, I, I always tell people that want to get into comedy that I'm like, I'm like, it's a, it's an industry of like talented people. Mm-hmm. So like feeling like, oh, but I'm really funny and talented. I'm like, that kind of just gets you like through the door. Now you got to like... Now you have to do so many other parts of that. It's like everybody knows that they're funny that gets into this, but there's so much more. Yeah. <sighs> you have to be a pervert. You have to be suicidal. <laughs> yeah, it all, it all... <laughs> it's not just funny, you guys. You have to be sick in the head and unwell to do this. Uh, how do you how do you stay uh, like he- healthy on the road? I did I did one weekend with somebody, mm-hmm. and I feel like uh, the shaking the hands afterwards, like I could feel myself getting like a sinus infection. I know, I know, my throat always hurts after I go on the road. I actually don't know. It's yeah. I would keep sanitizer on you. I try to do more fist bumps than anything. But people that are drinking after shows love to get close to your face. They're so like in they your get grill. So buddy. close, dude. And and I'll say this right now. I actually don't mind. I'm um, 
I'll give a hug if it doesn't feel perverted. If you if it feels ge- like genuinely you want to have a quick connection and a hug, I'll give a hug. Um, and I don't mind giving a hug, but there's something like, ladies, you can't just grab another woman because you're a woman. Can I say this? <laughs> I've, I've seen this happen. It's actually fucking nuts that you guys are assaulting more than the men sometimes. It is. Like, I don't, I don't like my boobs touched. I don't like my ass grabbed from people that I don't know. I don't know if that's shocking to people, but very recently at the mothership, I had to get a woman kicked out who grabbed my ass on the way onto the stage and on the way off. So like literally squeezed and shook my cheek up oh. and down. Not even like a go get him tiger. A go get him tiger, I might even let her get away with. It. And I don't like that either. But I wouldn't, have, but it was so funny. They're so on it at the mothership. I was like, you know, I came off stage and I told security, like, that woman grabbed me. She needs to go. Like, immediately I'm pissed. I just don't like being fucking touched. I don't know what to tell you. And, um, and and so I figured they're just going to kick her out of the show. And then 30 minutes later, I'm smoking in the green room. So the, uh, I, the, the cops come in from Mothership and they're like, come here. And they're like, we have her downstairs in cuffs. Do you want to press charges? I was like, no, no, dude, no. <laughs> She's, she was like, also like, I'm pretty sure a specific fan of mine. So I was like, I kind of just wanted her out of the show because it is just, obno- you should learn. I don't know what to say. You can't touch people. It's not, it's not the 90s. Yeah. In the 90s, you could grab another girl's boobs. It's not the 90s anymore. 